See, that's the thing I love about God. No matter what you are dealing with, no matter what your shortcomings are. I, I, I Rashad and I were talking the other night about how we get sick of ourselves. Just get sick. Just get so sick and tired of myself. But God is not like that. God's not sick and tired of you when he sees you trying. Amen. Now, go with me to Isaiah chapter 40. No matter what's going on, y'all, God wants to encourage his people. And listen to this. God wants you to know all that you've been going through. There comes a finishing line to every battle. The war is won in Christ Jesus, but we have to go through these little battles. And God is letting you know what he says about the battle you're fighting right now in your personal life. Listen to this. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Another word for, for accomplished is ended, complete, finished. Mm -hmm. Completamente, finito, it's done. Your warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places made plain. Let me explain what that's really saying. That means God is going to smooth out all the rough edges. He's going to level out the playing field. That's in our language. That's what he just said. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it now let's go all the way down let's go all the way down y'all to the last four verses now what I want to say to you before we get to verse 28 29 30 and 31 is what God is letting you know he is in control no matter what situation no matter what circumstance you or battling with, no matter what deep-seated inner battles you're struggling with on your own, your insecurities, your fears, the areas in your life that are broken, the areas in your life that are bruised, God is letting you know that all that the devil has waged against you, all the war that he's waged, all the attacks, all this mess that you've been in is coming to a close, y'all. The curtain is coming down on it. This battle will be one of those things that the Bible refers to and says, it came to pass. It's gone. And the thing that you have to recognize is there are times when you come out of the battle, it takes a minute for all the residual effects to fade away. So if you find yourself still feeling things, still thinking things, still battling certain demons. It doesn't mean the war isn't over. Sometimes when you watch a storm go by, this is, I just inserted this because I got this after the service. Sometimes when a storm, you get a torrential rain, the clouds are everywhere, and the thunder and lightning is just crackling and, and jolting and just crazy. Everything's soaking wet. But the storm comes to pass eventually, doesn't it? And when the storm comes to pass and the sky begins to clear, what happens? You look up, you still see clouds. You look down, the ground is still wet. But it doesn't mean the storm has not passed. Same with trials. The same with the problems in our lives. It takes a minute for Satan to get the memo. See, the demons are a little dense. They're sharp, but on the other hand, they're dense. 
and they're like the proverbial snake. When you cut a snake's head off or you cut a worm's head off, what happens? The worm is still wiggling. The snake is still slithering. You cut a chicken's head off. What does the chicken's body do? It runs around. That's what they call like a chicken with his head cut off. That's what demons do. They, You are thinking that they are still right there, present and accounted for. But no, they've had their heads cut off. They've had their arms cut off. Their history. They just don't want you to know it. So they keep wiggling as long as they can wiggle. But they know that their goose is cooked. All right. Now, I just want you to understand when God brings your battle to a close, it's done. The only one that will reignite that battle, that struggle, that problem is you. You're the only one that has power to open that door up again. All right, let's go down to verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He doesn't have to figure it out, y'all. He's not tired. He giveth power to the faint, verse 29. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. See, this is the thing I love about God. The, there are other scriptures that say his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And that's what he's saying. He giveth power to the faint. That's why a lot of people look at you and wonder. Some people look from afar and wonder, man, how did they accomplish that? How are they able to handle this, that, or the other so well? Why? Because of the grace that God has given you. Things that would make other people who are stronger than you crumble, end up in the insane asylum. You walk through the fire and you don't get burnt. You walk through the flood and you don't get drowned. Why? God. He's the common denominator to all your strength. I'm going to read it again because I want you to get that in your spirit. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. That means even the young will get tired. They get worn out. And the young men shall utterly fall. Folks get bummed out and folks fall backwards. Fall, folks fall back into their messed up ways. But they that wait upon the Lord. You know it's so hard for us to wait. Let me read that. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not and not faint. Listen, listen, listen. Sometimes we get befuddled with ourselves. I'm going to share this real quick because I'm feeling this. Peter, I feel like the Lord wants you to know you have no need to be frustrated with yourself. I'm fighting the tears right now. I don't know what has bummed you out about yourself. Oh. Ooh. Okay. I don't know what has bummed you out about yourself or what attacks you during the week during your days and nights when you're alone. But number one, know that the Holy Ghost is your paraclete. He's right alongside. He's in you. He's with you. You're never alone. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God is not giving up on you. Don't you dare give up on yourself. 
Don't you dare get impatient because things aren't happening in the pace you think they ought to go. Because you're not growing at the pace you think you ought to be growing. Because you're not where you think you ought to be spiritually or maturely uh, or, or uh, in the form of maturation. The bottom line, Peter, is God wants you to know you are his son. Bottom line, end of story. End of the argument. Case closed. No matter what your what tricks your mind plays on you, no matter what kind of twists and turns your emotions put you through, no matter what the demons attack you with, you are not what the demons say you are. You are not your past. That does not define who you are today. You are who God says you are, and you hold your head up high, and you rebuke those thoughts. You cast down every imagination and every high thing that will exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. You keep your head up, Peter. God is not only with you, he's in you, and he is for you. Do not allow yourself to get discouraged. All right. Now, to get back to the message. All right. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. This is what Jesus came to do in our lives. And sometimes we need to be reminded. When you think of Jesus, what do you think of? You think of a Savior, the Son of God. God come in the flesh, according to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was God, and the, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and strength. Now listen, grace and truth, listen. So that establishes who we see Jesus as. But that is not all he is. And some of you need to be reminded what you have in salvation, what you have in the Son of God, what you have in the Holy Ghost that dwells in you. And this is what Jesus does in our lives. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, starting at verse 1. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Which one of you out there are broken hearted right now? To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Peter, Rashad, and Key, you guys are going to experience a new level a new level of freedom if you pursue God for all that he has for you. For those who are really, really pursuing God, hot pursuit, not casual pursuit, hot pursuit, you will experience a new level of freedom to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that more. That's what Jesus is here to do. Heal the brokenhearted, free the captives, comfort those that are hurting, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. In other words, you give him your scars, your hurts, your insecurities, your struggles, your weaknesses, your failures, your sins. And he, in return, gives you in exchange his beauty. The oil of joy he gives you for mourning. The garment of praise he gives you for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build up the old wastes. They shall raise up 
former desolations and repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Let me tell you, some of you guys think you're under a generational curse. Some of you think that you have issues because of your families. Yeah, that may be so in some areas that may have been so in the past. But see, what God is doing is he's removing all of that. That's what this is saying. The, all of this stuff from your past, from your lineage, the buck stops right here, y'all. When you step into Jesus, you are stepping out of your generational curses. And what you do to make sure you seal that deal is in the name of Jesus, you renounce every generational curse. You renounce every contact or any any connection that your lineage has had or that you have had with the occult, with witchcraft, with sorcery, which, with new age, you renounce it and command all of that to stay as far away from you as the East is from the West. You have no part or parcel with it in the name of Jesus. That's the way of keeping that bloodline clean. So I just want you to know, I'm going to stop there. I want to read verse 11. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown into it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all nations. See, there's going to come a point where things start happening in your life and you're looking at, at it with surprise because you're thinking, I did that? I said that? I was strong enough to withstand that? And you will surprise yourself. Why? Not because you're all that in a bag of chips, but because God is all that. He is. He says, I am that I am. That means I am all that you need me to be. That's who he is. See, God is not a little God. God is not a God amongst other gods. God is the God, King of kings, Lord of lords. He is God. He is the one and only true God. And when you really get that in your novel, and you really get who Jesus is and the authority that was given to him, you realize you have all authority too. Any demon out there, any work of darkness out there, baby, you got authority. You got power over it. Even this little mess here called flesh, you have power over all of it. But the only way you're going to stay free or get free is to usurp your power. Take your authority. The only way a demon can beat you down is if you lay down and take it. If you give him permission through your sin, through your attitude, through your anger, through your bitterness, through your unforgiveness, all of that will give him the open door and a big invitation. Come on in and set a spell. And then the hell begins in your life. No, you don't want him to wreak havoc in your life. So use the authority God has given you. Reclaim your turf. And your turf is your destiny. Go in and possess your land. That's your destiny. Don't combine other people with your destiny. Your destiny is your destiny. Don't think because they're not doing it and they're not doing it and they're not with me and they're, and they're gone and they're not talking to me and they don't like me and they think I'm a big booger man. That that ruins your destiny. No, sorry, baby. No monkey. I'm going to say it in real bad English. Can't no monkey stop this show because of God, who God is. When you keep remembering and reminding yourself who your God is, you don't have to worry about getting screwed, royally screwed by the enemy. You don't have to worry about that because God's got your destiny in his hand. He's got every one of your scars listed. He knows all the areas you need to be healed in. And I'm going to tell you, there are things some of you can look back when you were two, three, four years old. 
and you know some mess has happened to you. You know you've been molested. You know you've been raped. You know you've been abused psychological, sexually, physically, emotionally, all these different areas of abuse. Some of you have experienced that. Some of you have been dealt with through neglect, areas that you really have need of recognition of of somebody to affirm who you are and they act like what you say is nonsense. That too is an emotional scar. Guess what? God can heal all of it, no matter whether it pertains to rape, abuse, murder in your family, violence. God can help you. See, a lot of you struggle because you're not able to forgive. I remember I told the Lord, the people that raped me, I couldn't forgive them. I was just honest. I can't. So if it's that important to you, Lord, and you may need to pray the same prayer. If it's that important to you, help me. Give me the ability I don't have. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. He gives strength to the weak. Give me the ability and I will forgive. I'm willing, I'm just not able. Make me able, and I will. Next thing you know, forgiveness is done. You don't even know it till you run across that person down the road, and you realize you're not seething with anger when you see them. You're not seeing them up on flesh hooks, seeing them in the fire burning because of what you want to do to them. No, all that's gone. Why? God did it in you. See, that's the thing I love about God. No matter what you are dealing with, no matter what your shortcomings are. I, 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 Rashad and I were talking the other night about how we get sick of ourselves. Just get sick. Just get so sick and tired of myself. But God is not like that. God's not sick and tired of you when he sees you trying. Years ago, let me share this with you. For those of you who are still struggling with you, <laughs> you know what you adds up to. You know what's in that list of you, what all that encompasses. For those of you who are struggling with you, a friend of mine, she's a minister. She was getting sick and tired of watching uh, a particular brother in our church. He was an older man going, he was my age, going down the aisle to get prayer. Well, what's he getting prayer for this time? Same thing, drinking problem. Well, let me tell you, you guys, if you knew his wife, you'd understand. And I ain't gonna say anything else. Brother man was sweet as pie. Unassuming, very, very kind. He was the one that would be there when people were in the hospital, even when the pastor wasn't, he was there. That man, was always hitting the altar for his alcohol problem. He had an addiction to beat the band. He was failing and failing, but he was always repenting. And he wasn't trying to play games with God like some people do. They figure all they got to do is say, forgive me, and they got a, a, a get out of hell free card. But God knows when you really are sorry and when you just don't want a booty whooping. He knows the difference. And so do you. And this man was going down the aisle. And this woman said she was in prayer praying for him one night. And she said, Lord, I don't, am I wasting my time praying for him? He looks like every time you turn around, it's the same old thing over and over and over again. And God, she said, God spoke to her and corrected her and said this. You see him as failing and failing, and failing. I see him as trying, and trying, and trying. And I say that to you. You see yourself as failing, and failing. God sees you as trying, and trying. Every time you get on your knees, you're taking a bath. Every time you get up off your knees, you're clean. That's when your heart really wants it. For those of you who are just playing Christian games and you don't really mean it, only you know that. I don't know it. We don't know it. Only you only you do. You and God know where you're really coming from. 
And if you're really crying out, trying to get over some of this mess that you've been caught up in, some of the stuff that some of the sin you still want to participate in, knowing you want to participate in them, but you're crying out to God to get it out of you, to turn you off to the thing you're so turned on to, God is able. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. (laughs) Be encouraged. God is for you. He's not against you. You hear me? God bless you guys. Be encouraged. When you feel like you're running around in circles, chasing your tail, keep running. Keep running. But don't chase your tail. Chase God. Even if it feels like all you're getting is your tail, keep chasing God. Keep chasing. Keep calling. Keep crying out. Keep praying. Keep confessing till you get a hold. Grab the horns by the altar. Grab the altar by the horns. Got it backwards, but grab. Grab a hold of God with all your might as the deer panteth for the water. So my soul longeth after you, Lord. Cry out to him. Don't give up. Don't give up on you. Whatever you do, don't give up on you. Be encouraged to know that God is for you, not against you. You're not a lost cause. He hasn't given up on you. Yes, I'd like to say that's the kind of encouragement we need as soon as we open our eyes in the morning.